At night, the senior side of Tokyo, prostitution, protection rackets, that sort of thing, is run by an operation called the Yakuza. Now, these guys are tough. These guys cut their own little fingers off every time they make a mistake, one knuckle at a time. They're like the Mafia, and then some. Until recently, they drove Jaguars, but today, just about all of them have S-Class Mercs. What draws these outcasts to the Yakuza on the surface is a world of flashy cars, expensive suits, and high living. Midnight Club, Japanese speed racing, Wangal racing, Whatever you want to call it, Japanese highway racing in the 90s was a cultural icon that found its way into movies, video games, and into our hearts. Of course, when you think 90s Japanese highway racing, you think about the heavy hitters. The Nissan GTR, the Honda NSX, the Mazda RX-7, and of course the Toyota Supra. Now these are all fine if you wanted a basic Japanese car with a plastic interior that you wanted to drive fast on the highway. It was a pretty simple formula. Get yourself an inline six engine, spend 20 or $30,000 on a twin turbo system, and then boom, you're off to the Wangan to try to go as fast as possible. But there was a rare breed of Japanese street racers, cut from the cloth of the Yakuza. They demanded pure excess and luxury, and at the same time wanted to go directly from the meeting with the big boss in downtown Tokyo to go to the Wangan Highway and try to touch 300 kilometers an hour. If while driving around Tokyo, you happen upon an S-Class Mercedes-Benz with blacked-out windows, here's a tip. Get out of its way. This is the Emperor of the Wanga, and the only one in existence, the wide-body AMG S72 Coupe. Japanese street racing, also known as Hashiria, has a long and storied history in Japan, dating back to at least the 1970s. In the early days, street racing in Japan was primarily focused on motorcycle racing gangs, the Bozozo. These gangs were inspired by American motorcycle gangs of the time and had tons of conflicts with each other and police. The scene eventually transitioned from the American biker gangs to American hot rods. A lot of these hot rods are still seen on the streets of Japan today, and the buzoku are still very popular. In the 1980s and 90s, Japanese speed racing began to gain a lot of attention because manufacturers made cheap, reliable, and highly effective sports cars that were easily customizable to each driver's need. When the Skyline, and I'm not joking, is one of the best cars I have ever driven. But at the same time, it's one of the very nastiest cars I've ever sat in. The seats are crafted from pure Volgalore. The dash is hewn from a solid block of pure plastic. I need to get out. Kanjo. The first move of Japanese street racing in the 80s was called Kanjo. It was named after a highway loop called the Kaju Saranosa. Races back then were wildly popular and featured Hondas and other hatchbacks. Most of the cars had random English words written all over them. Back then, you see the establishment of a few cool street racing teams, mainly Top Gun and No Good Racing Team. This era didn't last long, as law enforcement pressure grew after a series of accidents resulted from the infamous 90-degree turns. The second wave of street racing in the mid-80s shifted to the Tomei Expressway, a superhighway that connects Tokyo to Nagoya. Now with the wide open highways, the cars are going faster than ever. During this period, we saw the rise of real Japanese speed highway racing. The characters of the racing teams during this era were larger than life. On the rest stops of the Tomei Expressway is where the infamous Midnight Racing Club was founded, giving birth to a cultural revolution in Japanese and global car culture that influenced video games, magazines, and a full anime series. Two 
Several of Japan's most famous street racers began to make a name for themselves at this time. Yoshida son of his iconic 930S Porsche Blackbird. <laughs> and of course, the legendary Smokey Nagata, who pushes gold Toyota Supra in excess of 200 miles an hour. His identity is being concealed for his protection, but it's so obvious that this is the legendary Smokey Nagata. Police began to lock down the races on the Tomei in the late 1980s, but a new superhighway was about to open that would span Yokohama's gorgeous Bayshore scene. The new route had expansive wide lanes, steep drops, uphill bridges, more modern asphalt, and blistering straightaways that would change car culture forever. In 1989, the Wangan opened, and the Japanese street racing scene exploded, and were remained unregulated for a decade. Dozens of car clubs were formed, along with known wolf drivers. Again, we attempt to conceal the identity of this famed top speed tuner. But here goes nothing. A 200 mile per hour blast on a public highway. Competitions on the Wangan took the form of top speed blasts to see who could reach the highest speeds, and time attacks, who could finish a course as fast as possible. It was during this era that nearly every car that could be enhanced was being tuned to go as fast as possible and Japanese tuning industry took off. The car accessory market exploded in Japan. The car accessory business in Japan is worth 10 billion pounds a year. But this is 1990s Tokyo, and you're not just some geek that wants a JDM rocket. You're a multimillionaire living a lavish lifestyle. Maybe you work for a criminal organization. Maybe, if Smokey Nagata looked at you too long, you'd shoot him in the kneecap. Ignoring Japan's ban on privately owned guns, the Yakuza are known to have large caches of illegal weapons. For you, a Mercedes is the only way to go. Given the choice of any car in the world, what did it be? The first choice would be a Mercedes-Benz, and second, a Rolls-Royce. Why do you like Mercedes-Benzes? Uh, it is built well, and it is very strong. And AMG Japan is your tuner company of choice. AMG Japan was a tuning madman of the East. Even among collectors today, there's a debate. Who did AMG design the best? The precision of AMG Germany or the extreme aggression of AMG Japan? So if you wanted to impress your Yakuza boss at dinner and then kick ass on the highway until sunrise, you had to go to Mercedes and buy an S-Class coupe for $120,000 and then take it to AMG Japan and spend another $120,000. And this is the result. With a top speed of 185 miles an hour and with an interior bigger than most Japanese bedrooms, this wide-body S72 AMG Coupe is Wangan Royalty. First, let's talk about appearance. Built in 1995, the C140 was shipped directly to Japan from Stuttgart and sports a full AMG aerodynamic kit finished in 199 Blauschwatz with color-matched AMG monoblock wheels. The all-metal rear wide-body option on this car is so rare, so extreme, that we've never seen it in an AMG coupe before. At such high speeds, braking power is crucial, and just like many Wangan Mercedes, the AMG brakes here have been swapped out for larger Brembo one-piece calipers. This car is all the proper AMG badging for the time, and the upgraded AMG interior package is luxury to an extreme. Even the rear seats are covered in burlwood. And a typical 90s Japanese excess, don't forget about the burlwood wrapped AMG 300 km an hour instrument cluster with crystal accents. Now keep in mind Japanese technology is a decade ahead of the USA and the car came equipped with a full satellite navigation display and fully integrated cell phone controls, a Japanese only factory option in 1995. But the real treat is under the hood. The ever so elusive Alfalterbach built B12 S72 AMG engine. An engine so rare, so hard to find, that the exact horsepower is sold for debate. Most experts agree that this model sports about 518 horsepower with 553 pounds of torque. The AMG S72 engine was originally an M120 Mercedes engine, bored out from 6 liters to massive 7 liters, and features a level of tuning that is seen only in the 1999 Agani Zonda C12S. There are two more dead giveaways. This is a true Wangan racing car. 
In the trunk is an air ride kit for the rear suspension, especially built for highway racing. The second is a digital aftermarket speed indicator on the dashboard that tracks both top times and top speeds achieved during a blast. This car is a true one of one. We acquired it early 2022 directly from Japan. And after minor paint correction, we slotted the vehicle for the Petita Collective Museum Permanent Collection, where it goes on display starting in 2024. We're talking about Midnight Racing, when we're talking about AMG Japan, we're talking about elite drivers. We're talking about risk takers. We're talking about visionaries. You know, guys that lived in their own world. These are guys that only came out when the moon came out. It's the Midnight Club. I mean, Wang Gan Racing, one of the craziest things I've ever seen in my life. These guys would go 300 kilometers an hour for 30 minutes straight. This is like unheard of, you know, and this is illegal where they're doing it. There's no uh, unlimited uh, speed like the Autobahn. This is different. So when you're in a car built for these type of things, a car built for midnight club activities, you have to be ready for something that you've never experienced before. This car is fast, it's a beast. One of the smoothest, most beautiful rides I've ever been in. The C140 is one of my favorite chassis overall in the Mercedes lineup from the 90s. One of the most misunderstood designs from Bruno Sacco. A car that's been underrated and forgotten for many, many years. And this one is very, very special. This is a wide-body S72. Only seven or so S72 coupes were produced ever, and wide-body versions were never produced, so this one might be a one-of-one. One. The M120 is a legendary engine. We spoke about it in the Brabus video previously. The 7.3S Brabus has an immaculate drivetrain, something you don't really experience on uh, these roads and you never really experience with Mercedes because of the aggressive tuning. But AMG, they were also doing their thing in the 90s and they were the, the godfather of tuning. They were the original tuners, AMG was. Especially when it came to the 90s, they already had done their work in the 70s and the 80s and they were really, really seasoned. So when they worked on the M120 and they turned this thing from a six liter to a 7.2 liter beast, they really took it to the next level and you could feel it in these Japanese built AMGs. But when you press that pedal, best believe you're gonna get some power and you're gonna get something uncontrollable. That Japanese raw power. These guys in Japan, they're seasoned vets, you know, and they would have these midnight racing clubs because, you know, they wanna do 300 kilometers an hour. And when best to do it, then after hours when the streets are less busy and when the police can't really see you. These cars came equipped with radar detectors they came equipped with all types of uh, things that normal cars didn't have, you know? So they were really made for that midnight club uh, racing feel. You have over 500 horsepower in this engine. Very, very, very strong engine. You feel it as soon as you press on the pedal and you just take off and you just hear that engine roaring. I'm not even pressing the pedal down all the way right now. This car is fast. Very, very big, very, very wide, but very fast and nimble and you can move it and put it anywhere you want on the road and it will go there. The smooth uh, steering is incredible. I compare it to the Maybach and honestly, it's smoother than the Maybach in uh, my opinion, honestly. So it's crazy that W140 was so advanced in the early 90s and in 1996 when they made this C140 S72. Taking it on the road at night under these lights and under different conditions, you may feel like you're in Japan uh, these cars were pegged at 300 kilometers an hour and they would stay there, no problem, no overheating. These cars were built for the Autobahn, so the Japanese knew what they were doing when they were tuning them. And they knew they could push these cars to the limit, especially when they were racing them on those highways in Japan. I had to get in the zone tonight when I got behind the wheel of the S72. I felt like one of those Yakuza bosses when they first got their W140 and they felt a part of that cloth. This car was not built for no regular humans. This car was built for someone that's an elite. Someone that's at the top of their class, top of the food chain. And these cars were built no different. This is the top of the food chain when it comes to AMGs, when it comes to racing. In the 90s, 
Mercedes in Germany did it like no other and Japan went even further with it. Japanese racing has been known for a long time, especially the underground clubs and the Wangan racing clubs were insane, especially the midnight clubs. And they were known for relentless racing throughout the 90s and is very, very well documented. Weaving through traffic in the midnight hours throughout the Japan highways. You're looking at a beach, you're looking at the C140 S72 AMG 1 of 7. We have a lot of Japanese cars and then a lot of Japanese builds in the collection, but this is the most special by far. This car has the wide body flares with a built in hydraulic system to make sure the car stays level because it's much heavier in the back. If you know about the C140, it's actually a more heavy car than the W140, believe it or not. The C140 is a very special build that's been overlooked for many years and many people forgot how prestigious these cars were. See, uh, Mercedes, they put all their engineering and all of their best gadgets in this S-Class Coupe. It was actually more over-engineered than the W140. The C140 was always better. So if you look at Mercedes lineage, they always put the most technology, the most luxury into the S-Class Coupes. So taking the S-Class Coupe from base 600, which is already incredible, and then turning it into the 7.2 liter monster with the extra wood and uh, all the extra packaging in the motor, it's an incredible car. You got the AMG mufflers, exhaust system, you got the AMG wheels, you got the AMG side flares, front and back bumper, and of course, you have the Yakuza AMG vibes when you pull up to anybody in this wide body monster. That's 72, one of seven. When it comes to Japanese car culture, people think right away JDM, and they think, you know, Mitsubishi's, GTR's, all types of different cars, Toyota. But when it came to the Yakuza and the bosses of their time, and businessmen, when they wanted to flex and they wanted to get down, they got in one of these cars. Why do you like Mercedes Benz's? It is built well, and it is very strong. They got in the C140, they got in the S-Class and the W140, you know? They like the rich leathers, they love the wood packaging, they love the strong, big engines, but they also knew that they were tuned by AMG so they can go fast and keep up and even beat those cars. So that's why these cars are so prestigious. And the Midnight Clubs, they brought it to the next level. They showed that, hey, we're not just businessmen, by day or we're like super villains by night you know what i mean these guys were crazy these guys were hitting the highway and they were ruthless with their racing so we just want to bring back that culture and put a highlight on the wangan racing era that's long forgotten but still lives in our hearts and still lives in our minds and every time we get behind the wheel of one of these cars especially after hours when the sun sets we activate and we turn into one of these guys so tap in we love the Japanese culture and we love to go fast just like the Yakuza boys in the Midnight Clubs.